What is going on guys? Coach Joe here at the Lions Den located in Colmar, PA. And in this video, we're gonna be giving you guys some tips to help train through low back pain, specifically when it comes to deadlifting. Now I find this video very timely because I recently had tweaked my back and I used all the tips in this video to get back to training and also train through the tweak. So we're gonna kick it over to Coach Matt. He's gonna break it down. Let's get on over to it. What's going on guys? Good to be back on the channel. For those of you who haven't seen me pop up in one of Joe's videos yet, my name is Matt. I compete in strongman, do powerlifting style training alongside of that, and I've got a degree in exercise science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You probably don't care. Let's just jump to the video. Today I'm going over something I hope can really help some of you guys out, which is how to train your deadlift and your squat with low back pain, and not only train it, but hopefully feel like you got something out of your workout and you didn't just move an empty barbell the entirety of your session. I'll be covering the deadlift variations here on Joe's channel and then the squat variations back on my channel. It's just Matt Malloy. And if you're struggling to pick the right guy, it's me with the stone on my shoulder and not the guy playing the flute. Flute guy. Now these aren't just exercises where I'm like, yeah, theoretically that'll work. It's all stuff that I've used in my own training going through a bad bout of low back pain myself. There was a period of time where I was legitimately pulling a trap bar deadlift off of blocks with a single plate on each side and it was killing me. And just bending over to pick up plates in the gym was so excruciating that I'd just outright avoid it or I'd let the clients all do it for themselves. I know how frustrating the process of getting through low back pain can be and I know how demotivating it can be to try and go into the gym day after day with low back pain. So believe me when I say I genuinely hope this can help some of you guys out and I genuinely hope this can help some of you get back into the gym to train and get back and be motivated to actually go to the gym each day. Okay, so the goal of getting someone through any sort of pain situation, whether it's your shoulder, elbow, knees, low back, does not matter, is to get them to be able to do a movement that pain is otherwise disabling them from doing, even if that means sacrificing weight on the bar. So we'll take a low back pain example. We have someone that can deadlift four plates normally, but with their low back pain, four plates is so excruciating that it's not even leaving the floor. Cool, we'll see if three plates work. Three plates is still really painful. Go down to two plates. Two plates still really painful. Down to one plate, you see where this is going. And we'll even go past that one plate point. So there are plates that exist outside of 45s, guys. If they can't do 135, we will try 95 pounds they can't do 95 pounds, we'll try 45 pounds. The point is you keep reducing weight in the bar to see if they can do the movement at all. So say we got all the way down to the barbell and they can lift the barbell pain-free or maybe it's a 500 and above deadlifter, they can lift 135 pain-free. That's great and that is what we will have them do and that's what you want to be doing in any sort of pain situation. If they can do the full range of motion, run them through the full range of motion. If you exhaust all of your options, say you got all the way down to a barbell or you got all the way down to body weight and it still had pain, that's when you move on to variations that closely resemble the exercise you're trying to get them to do. And this is all great. This is exactly how you address any sort of pain situation for any joint on the body or any muscle on the body. It's exactly what you wanna do. However, believe me when I say there are only so many sessions you have in you of deadlifting an empty barbell before you want to smash your face through a wall. What helped me keep my sanity going through low back pain, or at least some of it, was these variations that I'm gonna tell you now. And these variations just let you put a little bit of weight on the bar. They let you get a little bit of sweat in the gym and actually feel like you're getting a workout in and it just helps you regain overall confidence. So what I'm saying is the variations I'm gonna recommend you are in addition to doing the full range of motion. So if you can do the full range of motion with the barbell, empty barbell, you're still gonna do that. These variations are gonna be in addition to that and they should just help you feel like you're actually getting some workouts in, you're actually getting some training done. Sorry for that long intro, but it's important that you understand that these variations are not a replacement of the full range of motion. If you can do the full range of motion, these variations are to help you keep your sanity. All right, so this first move is something people tend to gravitate to and actually my favorite, and that'd be the trap bar deadlift. And I take it one step further and do trap bar deadlifts off the blocks. If you've never done trap bar deadlifts off blocks before, the closest thing I can kind of relate it to is like a portable, poor man's leg press. The trap bar deadlift position in the first place is a fairly vertical torso angle, and then you add the blocks into the equation and you're even more vertical. 
So basically speaking, you're taking a majority of the stress off your lower back and actually ending up putting it into your quads mostly. And it really, really feels like a leg press. It's actually kind of cool. Even during my most intense periods of low back pain, I was at least able to get some sort of weight on the trap bar. And even if I had to do a whole bunch of reps, I could at least get a sweat going and maybe get some minor conditioning in and some grip work in as opposed to just doing the empty barbell. And then when I started to get better, even when I couldn't really deadlift up to three plates, I was able to actually challenge myself on the trap bar block pull, which is really why I liked it. Even with more intense low back pain, I could still train to a higher degree and I could feel like my workouts were actually worth a damn and I wasn't just kind of coming in to spin my wheels. And then obviously as your low back pain subsides, you can drop this lower and lower. So you can choose lower blocks. You can go with the trap bar on the ground with the high handles. You can move to the trap bar with the normal handles and just progress your way down as your low back pain subsides. Also, there's really nothing to this movement in terms of a learning curve. Trap bar deadlift is very simple. You're basically lining up to the center of the bar, getting a nice tight position and driving up and there's not much more to say to that. So from a beginner friendly standpoint, easy movement to learn as well. This is something I still kind of use to this day in my programming. Currently, I actually have frame deadlifts. It's right over there. Um, and the frame is basically a very slightly harder version of the trap bar block pull. So still something I use to this day. Really, really love this movement. If you have low back pain and you think it's too serious for you to train with, try this out and see if it doesn't work for you before you just completely decide to quit on the gym. Okay, go to number two is another obvious one, which is the block pull. Now you don't need the fancy wagon wheels to do a block pull. You can obviously do them off of the namesake blocks, or if you're in a commercial gym, you're most likely gonna have to do the rack pull and mess up the barbell, but it's a commercial gym, they're probably already messed up. Now the obvious advantage here is the block pull is going to be your most similar variation to the deadlift itself. And the cool thing about this is you can custom make your block setup to the exact height where you no longer have pain. So if you only need to set up like a half inch block to where you don't have pain, that's awesome. Set it up nice and low. You're basically mimicking a deadlift at that point. Or if you need to raise it all the way up to something crazy like an 18 inch deadlift, you can set that up as well. So really like the block pull because you can kind of tailor make that height to where you no longer have pain. Now, the reason I actually prefer the trap bar block pull over the normal block pull is, again, this is a more deadlift position. You're gonna be hinged over a bit and there is a lot of stress on the low back and you're just gonna be feeling a lot of pressure. So even though you're pulling from a higher height, you may still find you're only able to get like a plate on or a very low percentage of the actual intensity you're able to, and you're running into that problem of, yes, maybe you're block pulling 135 and normal deadlifting a barbell, but again, there's only so many times you can come in and deadlift 135, even if it's off of blocks, without wanting to smash your face in the goddamn wall. So for those of you that are really trying to mimic the deadlift as best as possible, you really want that deadlift feel, or you're a power lifter and you're trying to get back to deadlifting as fast as possible, this is probably gonna be your go-to option. Just understand you might not be able to get a proper training stimulus out of this. You'll go through the full range of motion. You'll probably be able to lift a tiny bit heavier than when the bar is on the ground, but you might still not be able to get, you know, the training intensity that you want out of this. This is great for tailor making the exact heights where you don't have pain, but you may still not be able to load this guy up. And just like the trap bar deadlift from an ease of use standpoint, if you know how to deadlift, you know how to block pull. So there's no you know, learning curve to learning how to block pull. It does feel slightly different, but all of your positioning cues are exactly the same as your normal on the ground deadlift. So there's nothing new to learn if you're gonna move on to doing block pulls, rack pulls, or using the wagon wheels. Some things to ask yourself for this next variation. One, does whatever it is you train for or your training in general require that you pull conventional? Two, how good are you at dealing with slight inerrant hazing and or the phrase bitch boy being thrown in your general direction? And three, exactly how flexible are your hips? Now you might be sitting there saying, I would never try sumo deadlift, but 
If you have low back pain, you owe it to yourself to try this variation out. When I decided to pick up sumo, my back was still in a decently bad position and I was able to pull a lot of weight without any strain on my back. I couldn't take it to max capacity. There is still going to be that little bit of strain on your low back as with every movement, but I was able to pull some serious weight even though my back was still seriously hurting. Now the thing with sumo deadlift is though we call it a deadlift, it's more of a fancy squat when we get right down to it. It doesn't have that same hinge pattern that our conventional deadlift does, and instead a lot of the stress is going into your hips and into your quads as you kind of squat the weight up more so than hinge the weight up. Now I will admit bias here, my best movements in the gym are squat patterns, so it probably makes sense that I like the sumo deadlift since it does mimic more of that squat pattern than the normal conventional deadlift, but the amount of pressure it takes off of your low back, regardless of that, is just undeniable. I know those of you that compete in strongman, this might not be looking like a super good option for you, but you can at least use it for you know a training block or two to get you through the worst part of low back pain and then switch back to your conventional. And for the rest of you, you're just able to use sumo deadlift, so I'd highly suggest trying it. Now, the one caveat I would say is if it's your first time deadlifting sumo, there's a lot of stress on your hips. So you could go in and deadlift sumo and trade your low back pain for hip pain if you're not careful. As with any new movement, you wanna take your time to progress into it. And I know with my time sumo deadlifting, that was the thing that was really, really sore was my hips just because they were not used to that position. So take your time with it. The sumo deadlifters of the world do more so complain about that hip pain than they will you know, low back pain. So don't trade your low back pain for hip pain. Be careful with the movement. Progress yourself as you normally would for any new movement in the gym. As for learnability, you will have to learn sumo if you've only ever pulled conventional, but while people make it out to be this super advanced movement, I don't think it's that bad to learn it to a competent level. Notice a competent level, not the advanced level. There's a lot of cues going into it. There's a lot of positioning things. It feels distinctly different from a conventional pull, but I don't think is as bad as people make it out to be. If sumo is something you're interested in learning, I'd highly recommend going to Bryce Project's channel, Calgary Barbell, and learning it from him. He's got a lot of good cues, that's where I learned it from, and I watched his video, and it was basically instant, very easy to learn. So, that is something you're interested in, go check that out, and learn it the proper way, first time, don't just make it up as you go. I'll finish up with saying for sumo deadlift, just set your pride to the side. Who cares about what the internet thinks? This will reduce some pressure on your low back and you'll probably like how it feels. So if you are going through some intense low back pain, again, highly recommend this movement along with the others. So that wraps up the deadlift variations. Like I said, these squat variations can be found on my channel. For those of you currently going through low back pain, I highly, highly recommend giving these a shot. Uh, you may surprise yourself with how well these can feel. And at the very least, just add these on to whatever you are currently doing in the gym. If that's nothing, definitely add these on. I know logically when you have low back pain you think bed rest is going to fix this. If I just stay out of the gym for a month this will fix my low back pain when it's actually the exact opposite of what you want to be doing. You want to be staying moving as best you can, running through full ranges of motion, even if it's just body weight and keeping active. So I really, really hope this helps a bunch of you guys out. I know how difficult this stuff can be, and I really want to see you guys get back in the gym, those of you that do have low back pain. So, Joe, thanks so much for having me on the channel. Check out the squat video on my channel, and I hope to catch you guys all in some video in the future. I'll see you all later. So first off, I just want to say thanks, Coach Matt, for making this video. He's an awesome guy and a coach here at the Lion's Den. Great YouTube channel. So if you guys can, go over, subscribe to Matt's content. There's a ton of value, and it's really going to help you guys with your lifting journey. I also want to piggyback and say whatever Matt had said in this video, I completely agree with and my team and coaches all handle it the same exact way. So these tips have really helped me when I get a tweak in any lift and use these uh, tips specifically for the deadlift. Always interested to hear what you guys have to say. So if you can leave a comment down below, I'll be sure to like it and also comment back if you have any questions regarding the topic. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos that'll be coming out in the future. But until then, guys, stay a lean, mean, strike machine, and we'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.